Oy vey. Katie and Ariana sandwich shop. Something about her has been delayed yet again. Brandy Glanville was hospitalized and she's opening up about why and how it's related to Andy Cohen. And we have an Emmys recap. Get ready for it. Let's get it. Oh, hi. It's me, Zach Peter. Pop culture junkie. Reality TV insider. Published author. And host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. Y'all, it is cold today. Um, it's well, it's chilly in LA, but just seeing the weather around the globe, around the around the world, around the world, around the world, around. The, I'm playing with my hair because I just washed it and it's like not there. But whatever, it's fine. It's Tuesday. We survived MLK Day, or not survived MLK Day, but we enjoyed our day off for MLK Day in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Shout out to MLK Jr. Love him. Um, and listen, we wouldn't be here without him, right? So, kadoos to MLK. But my goodness, it is freezing, you guys. It was it's it was so cold last night. Like it's brisk and chilly in LA. But some people are like, I was seeing people's Instagram stories. Danielle was saying that it's negative two degrees in Chicago. Oof, Jesus, G Willikers, everybody. It's snowing in Massachusetts. Uh oh, is it snowing in Pasadena? Let me know. It's not snowing in Pasadena. I would know because I am not far from there. Okay, let's, what are we going to dive into today? So we're going to talk about Katie and Ariana. We're going to talk about the Emmys. We're going to talk about something about her. Uh, Rachel Levis is coming after LVP again. Brandy Glanville looks like she's setting up a new lawsuit against Bravo. Um, and so I actually went to the movies last night. I don't remember. The, when was the last time I went to the movies? Oh, it was to see Barbie. Um, I went to see Barbie. Well, when did that come out? Over the summer? With my friend Sabrina, we went to go see Barbie uh, here in downtown at LA Live. But last night, Josh and I went to go see Mean Girls, the musical, which at first I was a little trepidatious about because I was like, mm, it's a musical. I don't really like musicals. Like, I know I'm gay, but I ain't that gay. You know, like I can suck some dick, but I, I'm just not into the, the musical of it all. And I will say, for anybody that's considering going and watching it, it was actually much better than I expected. Granted, I did go into it on some shrooms, um, but listen, it was not a bad time. I actually quite enjoyed I mean, there are some things that were like a little off. They definitely deviate from the original Mean Girl story altogether, or not altogether, but there are some bits where they do kind of deviate or they add in some new things. It is a little woke. I'm not going to, I'm going to warn you right now. It's a little woke, um, which I feel like everything is trying really hard to be extra woke these days. And sometimes we just need to let content be content and let it be natural and effortless rather than forced. Um, but listen, it's a, it's a more musical woke. That's one thing that I do wish it weren't so woke because like Mean Girls was just so ruthless and toothless. And it was just so, and it was meant to be, you know, hard and the jokes were meant to kind of land um a lot hard to hit a lot harder but they changed a lot of things that i'm just like okay we really didn't need to do all that we really didn't need to add all that like i get it you know whatever it, it is what it is i feel like a lot of things are just getting a little too woke for me these days but we'll see maybe the scales will balance out at some point but I actually, the movie wasn't bad. I would suggest going. It's even better on shrooms. I haven't seen it without shrooms, but it was a, it was quite enjoyable on shrooms. So I would highly recommend it. A little microdose. I'm not saying to like get like fully shroomed up, but like a little microdose or a little more than a microdose, but like, you know, just like the good, the right amount. I did the, the shroom gummies, which are uh, so good. And I take two gummies and it is quite the adventure so josh and i went we enjoyed the movie it was funny because we went to a later showing but like there was nobody there like we picked like a smaller theater instead of like one of the, the main big theaters um and it was a monday i mean i know it was a holiday and a lot of people had the day off but like there was literally only one other couple in the in the theater so we 
practically had the entire theater to ourselves, but it was a good time. Um, found it average AF. Oh, Mean Girls? Yeah, Remy. I mean, listen, I'm sure it is very average and it is a musical. You have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. But like I said, mushrooms just make it better. So, you know? Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I would recommend giving it, a, giving it a try. Okay, let's get into some highlights from the Emmys. Dun, 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 dun. Um, highlights from the Emmys. So they were hosted here in downtown LA, right down the street from me at... Um, not LA Life. What was not crypto? Was it crypto? I think it was crypto. Which I hate crypto. I hate the name of it. It used to be the Staples Center, and I miss it being called the Staples Center because it was called the Staples Center for like twenty years, and then it's no longer the Staples Center. And I don't love that vibe. I don't like calling it Crypto.com Arena. It's dumb. So now we just call it crypto. But that's where it was hosted. And so here are some of the highlights. Uh, I just watched the highlights. I don't really watch award shows anymore. I don't really care for the fashion anymore. You, you see the fashion on Twitter, so you need to watch the red carpet coverage. Uh, you just see all the photos. They come up live. And then, you know, there are clips on YouTube and clips on Twitter as well. So you really don't need to sit through the entire award show. But uh, some of the, the breakouts from last night. Christina Applegate got a standing ovation. She won. She joked, she went up and she joked that people were shaming her disability because they were standing up. It was a joke. And it was actually kind of funny. And people laughed because she had her little kink. She's, um, she has MS. And listen, you have to give it to Christina Applegate. She is still doing the damn thing. She shows up did her job. She filmed Dead to Me, the new season of Dead to Me, and halfway through, she really struggled with her MS, but she finished it. She's still showing up at award shows. She still gets glammed. She's rocking her body because obviously she can't move as much. She can't be as physically active. And someone like Christina Applegate, who was so idolized for their like va va voom beauty, um, you know, I can imagine that there's a bit of an identity crisis being an actress in Hollywood. And then your body not being what it used to be and not being praised in the same way. Like, I, I imagine that that does mess with your head. And that's not saying that we should idealize bodies over character, bodies over strength. Because in this case, you know, she is a very strong woman. But that's just what we've been conditioned to kind of think about. But she went up on stage and she did a little shimmy and she said, body not biozempic. And she's owning it. She's like, listen, this is who I am. This is my life. This is my body now. And I'm a do me. I'm a do me, Lucius. I'm a do me. We had uh, Quinta Brunson, who was awarded Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy, making her the first Black woman to win in 42 years. Congrats. Snap, snap, snap. I think uh, she gave a really powerful speech. There were a bunch of like reunions, like cast reunions from older shows where they kind of brought all of the cast back together to present some of the awards. We had cast of The Sopranos, cast of Two and a Half Men, the cast of Martin. We had the cast of Cheers. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Ally McBeal, Grey's Anatomy, which included Catherine Heigl. I feel like that was the one that like got the most attention was the Grey's Anatomy cast because Catherine Heigl was a part of this reunion. I don't watch Grey's Anatomy. I just know there was drama when Catherine Heigl left Grey's Anatomy and everyone's like, she's a bitch and she got fired and blah, blah, blah. Right. And then she's since spoken out and she's just like, I'm not a bitch. I'm just assertive and I know what I want and I know what I like. That's right, baby. I like Catherine Heigl and she was great in uh, Firefly Lane. Oh, that shit was so good. I loved Firefly Lane. It was so sad, but it was so good. And I loved it. And mm, I miss, I miss that show because it was just, it was so sad. It's about friendship and it's about like, you know, fighting and, and making up and getting back together and falling in love and not falling in love and, you know, Johnny and all the things. Is there another season of Dead to Me or not Dead to Me of um, Firefly? That's it, right? There's not a third. There's not another season, is there? I think it ended. Yeah, it did end. And yeah, I remember the, the final scene, which was cute and sad, but cute. They also had a segment with Tina Fey and Amy Poehler where they did a, a reboot of their weekend news update, which is something they used to do on Saturday Night Live all the time. Back in the day when they were on Saturday Night Live together, they did a weekend news update, which was cute. And there was a lot of nostalgia this this award show. Niecy Nash, she had a really powerful speech and she went up there and, she, and I was like, I know that's right. 
get a girl. Like everyone's like, I'm going to thank this person and that person, this person, that person. And sometimes we forget, like, I need to thank me. I need to be proud of me because I got me here. I got me out of bed. Yes, there were all these other people that were working behind the scenes and pulling the threads and doing all the things and they deserve recognition. But like, we cannot forget to acknowledge and be proud of ourselves. Be proud of you. Be proud of what you did. Um, be proud of waking up every day and continuing to put one foot in front of the other and keep going and stay tenacious. I mean, look at Niecy Nash, look at Jennifer Coolidge. You know, these are women that have been in the industry forever and they've always had really small roles or never had a breakout role. Now here they are at the Emmys living in their moment, relishing in it. So be proud of yourself today, you guys. Think of one good thing that you can be proud of yourself for. I like, I'm writing myself notes lately. Um, so this is a note that I have written right here and it says, today I am worthy and I deserve to be chosen for every opportunity, for every ounce of love that can be given to me. I deserve everything, all the good that comes my way. I'm grateful for all the good that comes my way. And I keep, uh, I, I open myself up to receive more. I open my arms. I open up my hands to continue to receive. Today, we are all worthy, but especially you and especially me. Jennifer Coolidge, get a girl. She went up there and she thanked all the evil gays. She won for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. These gays, they're trying to murder me. And listen, she thanked all the evil gays. And you know what, Jennifer Coolidge, we love you. On behalf of all the evil gays, we love you. And we're, we're rooting for you, girl. Rooting for you. Okay, that's, I mean, the juiciest bits of, of the Emmys. I will say that this was actually a surprisingly better show than I had expected. I think, I mean, because obviously we had the Joe Coy mess of it all. We had Chelsea Handler who, you know, she did a fine job, but um, yeah, I think that this was, this was, a, there were a lot of good, like, it seemed like it was a little more thought out, right? With the, the cast reunions and the speeches that were given, like overall, I think it was good. Okay, let's talk about something about her, the sandwich shop, because it's delayed again. Apparently, it's just one thing after another thing. And it sounds like this place may be cursed. I mean, granted, every other place that has tried to open up before something about her has not lasted very long. And they've all kind of, you know, struggled. Um, but first, I guess there was an issue with the permits with their outdoor seating. Remember, they had that cute little patio and they had the awning. So apparently the uh, previous owners didn't have the correct permits for that. So when they came in and they did it, they had to remove it and take it down because it went against city guidelines. I don't. I also think that like guidelines had shifted when it was pandemic world in 2020, because then all we needed was outdoor seating. And that's all we were allowed to do is seat outside if we were going to be open. So I assume that's also affected it, but they're, they had to take it all down. And now they're working to, I'm assuming, put it all back, but they need to get the right permits first, which is kind of annoying that you have to tear it down and put it back up, which I'm assuming is what they're doing. Cause that place is tiny. I told you it was like a little, um, it was like a little smoothie shop you know, like a little Jamba Juice that like, not even a Jamba Juice, but like a small little health foods. Well, at least from what I remember when I worked out there in West Hollywood. Then the health department made them redo their flooring because apparently there was an issue because it wasn't ready for like open food. I don't know what that means. How is floor not ready for food? I don't know opening restaurants or eateries. So I can't really speak to that, but that is kind of strange. So they had to redo all of their flooring, which then led to an issue with the re refrigeration. And I don't know, again, it's just been one thing after another. Ariana has been out of town. Uh, she's getting ready to do Roxy to do Chicago, play Roxy in Chicago. Um, so I mean, they just remodeled it. Now it looks like they have a lot of remodeling to do as well. So it's just, yeah, the city seems to be milking them for sure. But I just, I feel like that's what the city of West Hollywood does. Look at how long it took Lisa Vanderpump to open her restaurants. Look at how long it took, well, I guess Schwartz and Sandy's was a different story because that's technically not West Hollywood. But Ariana and Katie still don't even have a liquor license yet. I guess they're waiting. So it's just been a whole clusterfuck. But I mean, who knows if it's even going to open at this point? I feel like they're just bleeding so much money to keep paying the rent and then to keep paying for all of the remodels at this point that, you know, it's a little... It's a little strange, but I hope it opens. I'd love to see it open. I'd love to try it out. I'd love to come try one of their sandwiches. That Greek goddess sandwich sounds amazing. So hopefully in time for the finale, it'll be open. That way we can all go and, and support them and check it out. 
I do kind of feel like Ariana's just not really invested in it from what we've seen. She's got so many other projects and so many other things going on that at this point, I'm not certain that there's a full investment to even get this place open at this point. Bye. Dun, 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 dun. But at least at the reason Katie and Ariana seem to be struggling is it has to do with like permits and actual like construction and remodeling issues. Whereas the Toms, when they were opening Schwartz and Sandy's, that was more of like them, you know, not deciding on a final menu and not deciding on a final chef and not designing on final decor because of the money and all that stuff. And they're like, we need to open our doors. We need to open our doors. So it seemed like they had the op opportunity to open their doors but there were just like internal delays that were happening whereas with something about her i feel like it's external delays at this point they should get a food truck i mean that wouldn't be a bad thing could you imagine katie and ariana working a food truck come on but like i want to know like how often are they going to be at this sandwich shop like how often are they going to be working there like how i don't know it's interesting they need to find a new place if they can get out of their lease could you imagine getting a new lease breaking this lease after doing all the work all the remodeling all the investment and in rent there no you can't just be like all right let's just find a new place in west hollywood girl you crazy what are you talking about but again i do hope that it opens i want to see them be successful i want to see them flourish it seemed like pre scandaval when this was something that they were really invested in they were all in and now it just seems like they're a little distracted now. I mean, I think Katie's still all in, but Ariana just seems like she's got so many different things going on. And now she has to go to New York to, to uh, play Roxy in Chicago. So we'll see. Rachel blames LVP for the dog leaking. Okay, let's move to our next story. So Rachel first mentioned this on her podcast, Rachel Goes Rogue in the debut episode, which is currently the only episode because she has yet to release a second episode. So this podcast is already off to a great start. Everyone's like, hey, Rachel's changed. She's a new person. She's looking to rehab her life and she deserves to have a podcast and she's not just doing it for this or that or whatever. Guess what, bitches? She ain't even on her regular schedule. She hasn't even released a second episode yet. So who knows what she doing? So I don't feel bad for dragging her. Even though people get mad at me and like, that's so mean and you're so sexist for dragging Rachel. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you not realize how much I like, first of all, we cover housewives, right? There are housewives that I like and that I praise. And then there are housewives that I criticize. There are reality stars that I like and that I praise. And then there are, are reality stars that I criticize men and women. Don't make it a sexist thing. All right. Take your little sexist card and shove it up your ass because that's not a real thing. You can't just throw things out there like sexist or racist. Like you have to be mindful of the words that you're using to not dilute the argument and not cheapen it. Okay. Because me disliking Rachel is not sexist okay here i was championing ariana and katie wanting them to open their sandwich shop and you're gonna call me sexist like fuck off um sorry i didn't mean to go on a little tangent on a tuesday morning but it's just like it's so when people use such stupid arguments that are just not intelligent and completely ignorant like you sound like an idiot you know me disliking rachel does not make me sexist okay there are plenty of women that i like there are plenty of women that i support i champion women every single day i was raised primarily by women i if anything i'm sexist against men i fucking hate men they're terrible i've never had a positive male role model in my life all of the men in my life growing up never were able to show up and all the women in my life were always very strong they kept food on the table they were the breadwinners they kept the family together they put all the holidays together so if anything I support other women, okay? Um, but so Rachel, she's gone rogue. She's been rogue, but I guess now she's going rogue again. It sounds like a great porno, right? Um, but so she recently posted a clip on her Instagram story, which references back to Kyle and Teddy talking about Puppygate with Lucy Lucy Apple Juice. Remember, Lucy Lucy Apple Juice was the dog that Dorit got, and then she gave the dog up, and then it got leaked into TMZ that... Lucy Lucy Apple Juice was dropped off at a kill shelter. And she's like, that's not what happened. We gave it to another family. And then the family gave it to another shelter and yada, yada, yada. And then basically Lisa Vanderpump was the one who was accused of leaking this to make Dorit look bad, to forge a storyline on the show and to promote Vanderpump Dogs, which in the long run it did. And she did get her spinoff for Vanderpump Dogs, which ultimately got canceled after one season because it didn't not, it didn't do well. But 
Now Rachel is implying that Lisa leaked the story about Graham, her dog, Graham Cracker, now named uh, Hippie. That's what James Kennedy has renamed the dog to. She's alluding to or implying that Lisa may have leaked this to the press the same way she tried to embarrass Dorit. And she thinks that this is what Lisa was trying to do to her as well. And we know on her first and only episode of her podcast, Rachel Goes Rogue, she did talk about how she believed that Lisa was going to blindside her in Lake Tahoe with the dog and catch her off guard. And it was all in an attempt to make James look good because she wants to position James as the number one guy in the group whatever like girl enough like does it look fishy yes does lisa vanderpump push things for storylines yes is she intentionally trying to make rachel look bad i don't think so i don't think that that's her motive or her intention um but like this whole finger pointing game is just dumb and it's old first it's sandoval's fault and he manipulated me and i didn't participate in a seven month affair where i lied to my friends sandoval manipulated me oh i'm a 30 year old grown woman and sandoval manipulated me oh no it's james's fault james he was such a bad guy and i was just heartbroken and he's just a terrible person it's all james's fault or no it was ariana's fault we were never really friends she was always in denial their relationship wasn't even in a good place like it's ariana's fault she was just she should have been she should have asked more questions or oh no it was sheena's fault she punched me in the face and gave me a black eye so i had to get a restraining order against her because five foot two sheena is just scary and i'm afraid of her and now it's lisa's fault and lisa's trying to take her down for the sake of the show that she's not even on anymore like come on really you really think that they're they're vying to have you come back on the show to face the cast and you think that the reason they're trying to bring you back on the show is so that they can throw some dog storyline at you come on thank you next dun 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 Brittany says the problem I have with the cast is they blame all of their mess ups on being young when they were the same age as Rachel is now doing the same stuff that's a good point that's actually a good point they were in their like mid to late 20s uh going into their 30s that's a very valid point um they were i guess a lot older they weren't like 21 22 making these mistakes they were like 28 29 again rachel's age but again 28 is not it's not very young to be blaming it on being young and dumb and naive you know but to be fair they're now pushing 40 so at this point they should be learning their lessons but holding rachel accountable for what they were doing at that same age i get it but like at some point they all took their beating right they showed up to the reunions they took their beating they licked their wounds they got back in good graces with their friends they begged for forgiveness and they did what they got to, they had to do to keep it moving rachel didn't do that she's the perpetual victim and everything and i just I think when you're always operating from a victim mentality, then you always just stay a chronic victim. And that's just not, it's not helpful for yourself and your own mental health. And it's just not helpful for conflict resolution, which is the game of reality television. And it's just dumb. So thank you. Next, let's talk about Brandy Glanville. Brandy Glanville is opening up about this latest diagnosis that she's gotten, which she claims is is from stress relating to Ultimate Girls Trip. Um, and it seems like she's setting herself up for a pretty solid lawsuit against NBC. So she recently came out. I believe she was talking to ET and she even went back on her podcast and she says that she has stressed induced angioedema. Angioedema. So she talked about how back in August, her whole face swelled up and she went into anaphylactic shock. And so basically, angioedema is where your body swells up as a reaction to stress. It's really chronic stress and your body reacts by flare up, flaring up, inflammation, swelling, right? So she says that she also struggles to taste food and, you know, she her vision will go totally blurry and she won't see she can't see she said her throat has swelled up different times um as she mentioned she went into anaphylactic shock she said she went into the hospital they couldn't figure out what she was doing seven doctors later they found out that it was all stress induced likely related to the drama from ultimate girls trip morocco which is where caroline manzo accused her of or so i heard the full a, a not the full but a full version of the story that and so this is my retelling of what was told to me from my source 
that I guess they were kind of fooling around uh, Brandy and Caroline and they were drinking and they did go into the bathroom. I guess Brandy was being a little touchy feely with Caroline and she was kind of, you know, making some moves on Caroline. Another source has told me that Caroline was kind of engaging in it and, you know, it, they were both doing, the, they were both like getting drunk and being silly. And Caroline, remember there was a line about Caroline said, you know, I've always, I, I kissed a woman before, but I've never had her kiss me back or something like that, something to, to that effect. And so it was after, you know, she was in the bathroom with Brandy and Brandy was kind of getting frisky with her. And then Caroline left and um, she started to, you know, she was, she said that she was very uncomfortable. She opened up to Alex McCord and told her, you know, that she was abused as a child and this was triggering for her. And, um, you know, that she was just having a really tough time. And then that's when production found out about it and production then decided to file a complaint. I believe Caroline opened up to the other women about her experience and about how she was feeling. And some of the women were empathetic towards her. Some of them, like Eva, were not as empathetic towards her and were like, you know, you need to take accountability for your part in this and take accountability for your actions. You can't just blame Brandy, you know, for making advances that you were actively participating in and i think that's where it does get a little dicey right like if you are engaging in things with somebody else and there's alcohol involved like that's where there is murky water i'm not saying not to believe victims but i'm saying there are two sides to every case and you really have to analyze it objectively and look at both sides and and you know it's a tough one sometimes because it's like i understand caroline being triggered but then it's not caroline's triggers are not brandy's fault necessarily you know and my understanding is that brandy as soon as she found out that caroline was triggered by it brandy did apologize to her and brandy did reach out to her and try to like you know apologize for you know, it, putting her in that situation but again triggers are not necessarily the fault of somebody else and i say this because i not to compare assault to you know my experience but I've openly shared with you guys about my eating disorders and how there are times where as with eating disorders, a lot of it is uh, uh, triggered by a feeling of not being in control, lack of control, right? And so when there are times where I do feel out of control, I want to engage in those behaviors. Or sometimes there's a situation with somebody else where I get really frustrated with them or I get really stressed out by them and I get triggered in those moments, right? And I want to order a bunch of Postmates and binge and purge or whatever the case may be. And those are triggers, but that's not at the fault of anybody else. That's just something that I'm going to have to experience and that I'm going to have to work through. And that's where I use the tools that I gained in therapy, that I gained in treatment to be able to work through those things. Again, I'm not trying to compare my experience with an eating disorder to sexual assault, but I'm just kind of trying to find some similarities when it comes to triggers and how we can't necessarily blame other people when we feel triggered. We have to work through those triggers and use the resources that we've developed to help us work through those. And so again, I don't know the full situation with Brandy and, and Caroline, but it's clearly affected a lot. From my understanding, Brandy nor Caroline have filmed any confessionals, so it doesn't look like we're getting Ultimate Girls Trip Morocco anytime soon, if ever. I believe Caroline was in some sort of active litigation and now it looks like Brandy is setting up litigation. The fact that she's doing press and she's going on her podcast and she's talking about um, having to seek legal counsel and how, you know, she can't say too much about any of this stuff just yet, but like, this is her experience. It sounds like she's gearing up for one big fat lawsuit where, you know, cause she says like, I was on the phone with Andy Cohen and I got some really unsettling news. And the next thing you know, I started swelling up and I went into anaphylactic shock and I collapsed and had to be taken to the hospital. So she's already late. That right there is damages. Okay. You have to be able to prove damages in a case like this and prove how your life has been affected negatively by the network that you're suing. And so it's unlikely that they're going to want to take this to court and fight Brandy on it. They're likely going to want to, um, settle with her and i'm assuming she's going to be in for one big payday because now it's affected her work it's affected her reputation they won't air any of it i'm sure in court is when she's going to fight to have the audio released i don't believe there was footage of what went down in the bathroom with alex caroline and brandy but i mean there was um there was like a um 
an investigation, an internal investigation. And from my understanding, it didn't find one, didn't find it, you know, to support Brandy or Caroline necessarily. It kind of was just like, listen, this is a, her experience and her experience. And, you know, it doesn't make one right or one wrong. It's just kind of like we didn't come to any sort of real conclusion. So we'll see. But it does look like Brandy is setting herself up for some sort of big payday. I don't know if Caroline is pursuing money from them, though. Alex has not said anything. Eva, Vicky, Phaedra, they've all been very much in support of Brandy. Haven't heard from Camille about it, but Camille did say that she wishes that it would air and that she wants it to air. And she's seen clips from the Morocco trip and it's really good and it's really funny and she wants it to come out. Um, trying to think of who else. Alex hasn't said anything. Gretchen hasn't said anything. I kind of feel like I saw something where Gretchen was kind of in support of, um, kind of in support of Brandy as well. But again, Brandy's setting herself up for a big payday. And I think I'm pretty sure NBC is going to have to to pay out some good money to Ms. Brandy Glanville for all of this. Because again, they're kind of leaving her out to dry. And she's not wrong in the sense that they hire her to you know, do an ultimate girls trip where you drink and you behave badly. And Brandy's like, listen, they have us working 19 hour days. They have us drinking all day long. What do they expect from us? You know, I was encouraged for behaving this way in the past. The Traders season one just won an Emmy. So if the show that she, I mean, listen, she was a breakout star. Her and Kate Chastain were the biggest stars on the Traders season one. And if they won an Emmy for outstanding casting, and Ultimate Girls Trip uh, First Wives Club, the first uh, edition of the uh, ex-wives club, sorry, um, that did really well. That performed well. Brandy was a breakout in that one as well. They were considering bringing her back to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So it's like they were encouraging Brandy's behavior. Hmm. Ooh, good point, Mtronics. Is Bethany in hiding? No one has talked about her for weeks. Everyone's done talking about her. Everyone's over talking about Bethany. And listen, she's got no more legs to stand on. Oof. They paid for an entire production team and crew and cast to film in a location. How did they rectify the financial loss? Um, I don't know. I don't think, I mean, I guess they just cut their losses, right? I don't know how they would rectify that. I don't think there is a way to rectify other than to air it. Because at least if they air it, they can make some money off of it. But it, what is airing it going to do? I mean, it might piss a lot of people off because they might not show very much. But at the same time, at least they'll earn, like, people will tune in. Like the numbers will be there because people will want to watch it. It's just such a heavy topic that it's like, how do you approach that? How do you do it honestly? How do you do it delicately? We'll see. Um. I would imagine Caroline's going to fight to not let it be aired. Brandy wants it to come out and Brandy wants it to be aired. I am assuming Caroline is not doing her confessionals by choice and by her legal, the legal action that she's pursuing, which is really strange because at first she was talking about how, you know, she didn't want to pursue, she didn't file the complaint. She wasn't interested in any of, you know, making a big scene about it, but production is the one that filed the complaint and launched the investigation so interesting, 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 interesting. We'll see how this all plays out. But I mean, again, if Brandy wants the footage and the audio to be released, and I'm getting the impression that Caroline doesn't, what does that say about what the footage and the audio will actually reveal if it airs? We'll see. Okay, um, a shout out. This weekend, I'm going to be attending, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jeff Lewis Obsessed. It's an Instagram account. Sarah, she runs the Instagram account. She does lots of Instagram lives. She's hosting a live Q&A in Hollywood, if you guys are available, this Saturday, the 20th. Saturday, January 20th. And her special guest is going to be Kristen Takeman from Roni and from the most recent Ultimate Girls Trip, which was the Roni Legacy Edition. So if you guys want to join, I will be there and I will be, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be riding solo. I think I, I might be bringing Josh on Saturday, but we'll, we'll see if you guys want to come and hang. 
Um, be sure to follow Jeff Lewis Obsessed on Instagram, Jeff underscore Lewis underscore Obsessed on Instagram. Get your tickets, and I'll see you on Saturday. Looks like it's going to be a fun night. Congrats to Sarah on her first live show, live Q&A that she's doing. Kristen Takeman. Everyone's loving Kristen right now after that Ultimate Girls trip. So get ready. If you're not doing anything this weekend, get your tickets for Saturday. All right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest. Oh, not Saturday. It's Tuesday. Sorry. I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. I will see you Saturday. If you want to keep up with me, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach. Follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach. And be sure to hit the like button on your way out, guys. Boom, ba boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Get it, get it, get it. Hit that like button. Subscribe on YouTube if you're not subscribed. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, be sure to subscribe there as well. Follow on Spotify. Leave me an, a nice podcast review. You can leave up to five stars on Spotify or on Apple. If you're leaving a podcast review on Apple, then be sure to let me know what you're enjoying about the show. What are your favorite parts of the show? What's the favorite tea that's been spilled lately? That way other people, one, it's free, and two, other people can see what the show is about and what they can expect. So definitely, definitely, definitely show some love to your fellow podcasters, to your favorite podcasters, to your, to your favorite content creators. On YouTube, you can drop a comment. You can hit the like button. On Spotify, you can leave five stars. On Apple Podcasts, you can leave five stars or leave a review. All of those things really do matter. They help us stay in the charts. They help, you know, keep us in business. So get ready, Freddie. Get your merch. Link is in the description below. New merch down below. Go and get it. All right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. And I am wishing you a wonderful Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>